Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll show the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating the application of binary choice models, that is, probit, logit regressions, as well as extreme value regressions, to estimate regression models with binary data or dummy variables as dependents. Here we have got a data set that records a dummy variable where a company pays dividends or not, alongside leverage, log of company size, log of market cap, and weighted average cost of capital. We might want to see what can affect the decision of a company to pay dividends or not. And that makes um, a dividend payer a dependent variable, but it's a dummy variable. It can only take values from zero to one. So effectively, we're not predicting the value of our dependent, we're predicting the probability that the company will be a dividend payer. The probability that this variable is one and the probability that this variable is zero. Again, you might start with just estimating an OLS, regressing a dividend payer dummy of the leverage, log, size, and whack, and see how it um, affects the results. However, what is quite um, noticeable here is that uh, our estimation would not be uh, bounded as probabilities are. For example, if a company is quite large, it has no leverage and its whack is quite high, we can feasibly have an estimation of expected probability of paying dividends that would be larger than one. Or if a company is very highly levered, um, is quite small and its whack is quite small, we can have an estimation of dividend payment probability that would be lower than zero. And that's quite challenging, simply because we might want to explain our fitted terms in the sense of probability. And having a probability of, let's say, negative 5% is uh, simply meaningless. So this is one of the reasons, a conceptual reason, why a linear probability model, which is simply regressing your uh, dependent dummy variable onto independence, might not be the best option that exists. Another more technical um, issue with the linear probability model revolves around heteroscedasticity. It's very well known that due to the logic of binomial distribution, the variance of estimated probability that would arise from this model depends on how close the probability is to 0 or 1, or whether it's around 0 0.5. There will be natural heteroscedasticity in this model that is neglected when we are doing an OLS estimation. So uh, addressing these two limitations, um, the econometrics profession came up with a binary choice family of models, and the easiest uh, of them to apply and explain is probably the logit model, which uses the logic of logistic regression or logistic distribution, and it tries to model not the probability itself, but the odds ratio, which is basically the odds of a company being a dividend payer or not. That uh, alleviates both limitations that are associated with the linear probability model. First of all, our response variable in terms of the fitted term would be bounded between 0 and 1 as we are modeling the odds ratio. Later on, we can plug in the odds ratio into the logistic distribution and retrieve the predicted probability. So this is avoided. The issue with uh, generating expected probabilities that are higher than 1 or lower than 0. And what it also does is that it naturally accounts for uh, heteroscedasticity in the covariance matrix that you estimate in a logit regression. So let's try to interpret the results of the logit regression and uh, see uh, some of the challenges that are associated with that. We can see that the odds ratio, this is not the probability now, that's the odds ratio uh, of uh, uh, paying dividends if leverage, log size, and whack are zeros, is 0 0.78. That means that this odds ratio needs to be plugged into the logistic distribution to retrieve probability. The impact of leverage on the odds ratio is negative and significant, so the higher levered the company is, the less likely it is to pay dividends, which is quite uh, interpretable in the terms that uh, companies that have got a lot of debt to service 
might have less uh, spare cash to uh, pay out to their shareholders, which is quite um, understandable from in terms of theory. Uh, whereas the relationship between uh, size, WAC, and the dividend payer status uh, are insignificant. However, these cannot be interpreted as uh, effects on probability. These are effects on the odds ratio. If, for example, the odds ratio is already very high, already very low, the impact of additional increases of the odds ratio, additional decreases of the odds ratio on probability would be very small. However, when the odds ratio in, is quite close to zero, then even small changes to the odds ratio would generate material effects on the uh, resulting probability. This is something that needs to be kept in mind, and uh, this is where you need to calculate marginal effects if you want to translate these effects on the odds ratio to the effects of probability. So always estimate the effects on probability based on some um, starting value of the odds ratio. And that is the same for log it, prob it, and extreme value models. It's just that the distribution that translates the starting value of the statistic, here the statistic is odds ratio, it would be a Z statistic for the normal distribution, or a generalized uh, extreme value statistic for the extreme value uh, binary choice model. Uh, this process is universal across those. We also can have a look at the specification. We can introduce um, a Huber-White covariance method to also um, make our model estimation robust against any arbitrary heteroscedasticity. We can change the optimization method. However, sticking with newton rapson is um, uh, very advisable here. And we can also change the method uh, that calculates the uh, covariance matrix either based on the Hessian matrix or based on the outer product of gradients. Again, it's advisable to stick with the observed Hessian matrix, but outer product of gradients does not uh, introduce much material differences into your uh, standard error calculations. Again, as with any advanced um, model, uh, do stick with the default EV specification uh, when performing the analysis, unless you have got a very good theoretical or empirical reason for departing from these. And if we plug in the Huber White um, standard errors, we can see that our probabilities are massively inflated and no um, coefficients introduce significant um, changes to our odds ratio of uh, being a dividend payer. So if we move back to the ordinary covariance method and switch to the probit model instead of the logit model, we'll see that the probit model has two significant coefficients and the coefficients themselves are different. Uh, this is, again, uh, one key feature of binary choice models. Uh, their results quite heavily depend on the distributional assumption. Do you assume that the um, odds of um, being a dividend payer is logistically distributed, that's what you go for in logit, or normally distributed, that's what you go for in terms of probit, or are you going for a generalized extreme value distribution, and then you go for the extreme value uh, binary choice model. Your results might be quite different depending on this assumption, so it's always prudent to see whether they are consistent across all of them, as this is assumption sensitive. So leverage effect on the uh, odds of being a dividend payer is uh, qualitatively similar, negative and significant, to the logit model. However, the effect of log size is now positive, so larger companies are more likely to pay dividends in the probit model, which is reasonable given that large established companies have less room to grow and therefore might be more likely to pay out their earnings as dividends to their shareholders. Here, we might also want to have a look at the graph for the actual fitted and residual terms. So we see in orange the actual term, which is 1 or 0, and the uh, green uh, fitted line uh, shows how well do we explain the uh, likelihood of paying dividends or not. So for example, for some of the companies that don't pay dividends, we we're actually predicting that they are more likely to do so. For example, this company, company 23, uh, was predicted to be 76% likely to pay dividends, whereas in fact, it did not pay dividends. And this is quite a substantial deviation of the actual data from the fitted data, from what our model predicts. 
and there are also errors in the opposite direction. For example, we predicted that company 139 would be very unlikely to pay dividends, 9% likely. However, in reality, it did pay dividends. The actual value was 1. However, most of the companies, um, the tendency to pay dividends or not is reasonably well explained. Um, for example, you have got company 140 or 141 that did not pay dividends and the model did indeed predict so. And there is a wide range of companies over here towards the start of our sample that did pay dividends and the model reasonably predicted that they would. Finally, let's move to the extreme value binary choice model and see that the results are again uh, qualitatively and quantitatively similar. The effect of log size again is either significant or marginally insignificant in the three models that we investigated, whereas the impact of leverage is very consistently negative and significant, which allows us to justify that in all models, starting from the linear probability model, all of its assumptions and limitations, and across a range of uh, binary choice models, uh, probit, log, and extreme value, uh, greater leverage does reduce the probability that the company will be a dividend payer. The only thing that we have to keep in mind is that these coefficients cannot be directly interpreted as effects on probability. They need to be interpreted as the effects on odds or the statistic that you then plug into the uh, distribution function of choice, depending on your model, to extract this probability. And that's all there is with regards to binary choice uh, modeling in eViews. Please hit like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.